Come on, let's praise him together. I want to see you moving. Come on. In the chaos, when I'm far away, I can hear you. I'll never be the same. God, you're calling, calling out my name because you love me. God, you lead me when I've lost my way. Let's get there. When the world feels like it's shaking, when my heart feels like it's breaking, walking over waves can be hard to do. Take my hand, your hero, Jesus. You're the one who never leaves us. Whatever comes my way, I'm holding on to you. Here we go. Alone in the storm. 
We're going to take this opportunity to worship Jesus. Lift your hands. Let's sing this together. I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I I hope you are too. We got a couple more days left and we're going to see you guys back at church on Wednesday. That's Christmas Eve, Eve, two days before Christmas, Christmas Eve, Eve. We're going to see you. We're going to have some Christmas celebrations and all kinds of fun to celebrate the birth of Jesus. I'm so excited. So 
Today though, we're gonna talk more about the fruits of the spirit. We've got some special guest visitors and I might even be Mr. Santa Claus. So we'll see. But um, let's talk more about the fruit of the spirit. Today, we're on goodness. Goodness, this is gonna teach you how to be on the good list for Santa, right? You don't wanna be on the naughty list, you wanna be on the good list. So let's go learn more about how to do that. Let's start with our memory verse though, all right? Check it out. Hey friends, this is the Power Plug series and we're gonna learn starting with Acts 1.8 that talks about power and what happens when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit inside you. You get what? Strong. What do you get? Strong. What do you get? Strong. What do you get? Strong. Yeah, that's right. All right, let's get started. A oh, Mr. Beatbox! A oh, Mr. Beatbox! Yeah! Good to see you, and good to be seen, my friend. Boom, like the jacket. Thanks, it's my Eddie Murphy jacket. I like it. Take the lead, take the lead. Ha <laughs> ha, give me a beat. Yeah. Acts 1, 8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Beatbox. Yo, Beatbox out. See you in a little bit. All right, friends, get ready. First, I'm going to teach the legs. Then the arms, and yep, you got it. We're gonna put everything together from the top. We're gonna make it work. All right, let's do it. Starting with your feet. You're gonna go single, single, double, double, starting with your left foot. Here we go. Five, six, seven, starting with your single, single, and double. Perfect. Now let's add the words. Here we go. Five, six, seven, goes. You will receive power. Good. All right, now, next part is you're gonna step with your right foot, step out and in. Good, now from the top with the words. Five, six, seven, goes. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit. Perfect. Now, the next part is you're gonna step with your left foot forward and then you're gonna put your feet together. Let's try it again, that was pretty hard. Five. Six, starting with your left step forward, together. Good, now the words for that has come upon you. Got it, let's do it from the top, just the legs and the words. Five, six, seven, goes. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Good, you guys are pros. All right, now let's work with the hands. Five, six, seven, goes. All you're gonna do is point with your right, you will receive, that's it. Power, you're gonna show me your muscles. Let me see your muscles, hi-ya, good, awesome. Now, let's put that together. Five, six, seven, goes. You will receive power, good. Now, next part, the Holy Spirit, I just want you to use your left hand and bring it and point the back of your hand to me. Got it? Here you go, it looks like this. Point to me and bring it down. Got it? There's Holy Spirit. Good. it. Now, has come. Put your arms out. Are you grabbing a t-shirt? Got it? Grab your t-shirt in front of you, and I want you to put it on. Put it on. That's it. So it's has come upon you. Good. Let's try it again. Five, six, just the t-shirt part. Has come upon you. Good. Now let's do the whole thing, just the arms. Five, six, Seven goes, you will receive power as the Holy Spirit has come put the t-shirt on. Good, now we're gonna do the legs, the arms, and we'll put it together from the top. Here we go, five, six, seven goes, you will receive power, good, as the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Perfect, now practice, rewind it, do it over as many times as you can, now let's call Mr. Beatbox, you ready? Let's do it. Mr. Beatbox, I'm oh, Mr. Beatbox. Hey. hey, Mr. Beatbox. Are you ready to do this? I think they're ready. You guys ready? They're ready. Let's get it. Give me a beat. Oh yeah, here we go. Let's see if you practice. Acts 1, 8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Good, come on. Let's do it again. 
go. Five, six, seven goes. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Good. One last time. Here we go. Acts 1, 8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Ha! Thanks a lot, friends. See you later, Mr. Beatbox. Keep practicing. Hiya! Hi guys, I'm Maddie Elliott, and this is Storytime with Maddie. Guys, it's almost Christmas, aren't you excited? Today I'm gonna talk to you about goodness. See, you, everyone wants to be on Santa's good list, so it's a perfect time to talk about it. Goodness, or honorable things, can be found in the Bible. Goodness is actually your internal compass. It's your morals. It's what tells you what's right and what's wrong. In the Bible, you can find out all about goodness. In Romans 12, 21, it says, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. See, good can do so many good things. See, and one of my favorite stories in the Bible is called The Good Samaritan. I'm sure you guys have heard it a thousand times, but let's just go over it one more time. So it says in the Bible that Jesus was approached by, let's say, a lawyer. That's basically what he was. So he's approached by a lawyer and the lawyer goes, how do I get on Santa's good list? How do I get good for all of eternity? And so Jesus told him a story. And the story goes something like this. A man was traveling down the road and some really bad guys came up and beat him up. What the heck, he didn't even do anything to you. And they took all of his stuff. So he's sitting there on the side of the road, desperately in need of a Band-Aid, let me tell you. And he thinks, oh, maybe somebody will come by to help me. But as people were coming by, first came by a priest or a teacher. He came by and he goes, ugh. I don't wanna go near him. And he went to the other side of the road and he just kept walking, a priest of all people. Now the next guy who walked by was a Levite. He's like a lawyer or a judge. He's all up in politics. So he walks by and he sees this poor guy on the side of the road in desperate need of a Band-Aid. And he just looks at him and goes, mm, I don't wanna help you today. So he crosses to the other side, just like the priest. What's that about? So he goes to the other side of the road and he just keeps walking and he leaves him there all by himself. He has nothing. But then came by a Samaritan, <laughs> the good Samaritan. And he came by, he's just a regular guy. He saw this poor guy on the side of the road in desperate need of a Band-Aid and some clothes. And he walks by and he says, hey, let me help you out. He gives him a Band-Aid, stitches up his knees, makes sure he's all happy. And then he doesn't just stop there. He lets him ride on his fabulous donkey, which he brought, by the way, because he's traveling. And the Samaritan brought him all the way to an inn. Now, at the inn, he didn't just leave him at the inn and say, good luck, and like, have fun with it. No, he walked up to the innkeeper, he gave him money and said, hey, take care of him for a few days. And then he didn't just stop there. He came back and goes, I'm gonna come back and pay for any expenses that he brings up. How nice is that? Now that's goodness. See, we just, we learned in that story that Jesus is telling us to help each other out, to be nice to each other, to be good to each other. Because when you're good, God knows. And just like God, Santa knows. And when you're good, you get presents on Christmas. So what's the moral of the story here? Build a desire to be good, to be just, and to be right with God. Now, I'm gonna pass it over so we can learn more about goodness. Hello everybody, it's me Harry Potter. Just kidding, it's me Christian. It's cause the hair and the glasses, that I have a scar, right? Doesn't matter. Okay, what's going on guys? Okay, so we're talking about goodness and how great of a job did Maddie do? Madison, as I call her. But it got me thinking. You know like when you, when you, when you express goodness or you do good things, like, it, it essentially like makes your heart more and more beautiful. What if what happened on the inside happened on the outside? And like, every time you did something good or showed goodness, you got more and more beautiful. Huh. So let's say you walk an old lady across the street. Here you go, old lady. <laughs> let's say you feed the cat. Take that, Spreckles. <laughs> Name him Spreckles. Let's say you give some money to the homeless. Here you go, homeless person. Have some money. Let's say you help your sister with her homework. Need some help with math? I'm a genius. 
Let's say you clean your room for your mom. There you go, mom. Glitter is beautiful. What a poor guy. Man, that's gotta be a lot to clean up. Any hooser, um, so that actually had me thinking, what if every time you did something bad, you know, like on the inside, it's like you get like kind of an ugly heart? Mm. What if that happened on the outside too? So every time you did something bad, you got a little bit uglier. Oh gosh, what would that look like? Let's say you don't do your homework. Take that, oh, school. Let's say you kick your sister. Take that, sister. I'm a mean brother. <laughs> Let's say you say no to mom and dad. No, -uh, mom and dad. I don't think so. Let's say you kick the dog. Take that, dog. That's so mean for me to do, but I did it. I'm bad. Let's say you bully a friend at school. Take that friend at school. Oh. And then you become... Ah, the Grinch! Ah! You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is scary. Seriously, where did they get that stuff? Freaky. Da, da, da. The Grinch. Oh man, if you haven't seen The Grinch, Jim Carrey version, <laughs> the best. It's not nearly as scary as that Grinch was. So anyways, talking about goodness, I cannot think of a better story to give that would explain literally the most goodness of good being gifted to the world other than, you guessed it, the birth of Jesus. Think about it, okay? Jesus is a the good shepherd, a John 10, 10. Jesus is the embodiment of all of the goodness of God. The Bible says that it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. It also says that it is the gospel of Jesus that is the power unto salvation. So if you connect those two, the goodness of God that draws men to repent, which is a step in giving your life to Jesus and bring in what Romans said, Romans 1, 16, that that, that gospel, of Jesus being born and being brought into this world, dying on the cross, raising again, and bringing us up with him, that is the power unto salvation, then obviously, uh, duh. There's no better story to tell than the birth of Jesus that bringing the goodness of God into the world is the epitome, the, the, the peak, the max, the Mount Everest of stories when it comes to goodness. So, let us tell you a tale. <clears throat> Now, this is a very long story, so I'm going to give you what we call in my generation, the spark notes of the story. You might know it as cliff notes, or you might know it as bullet points, or you might know it as just normal, average, everyday learning. <clears throat> God bless our school system. So, we are going to talk about the birth of Jesus. Now, basically, the story starts in the very beginning of everything. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was up home and void, blah, 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 all that stuff, right? You get it. Fall of man, uh, Adam and Eve, bite of the apple, not a great snack to take. And we don't know if it was an apple, okay? It was a fruit, it was just a fruit. Took a bite, man fell, oh no, we're in need of a savior, boom, here we are. So what happens was, there was a young man named Joseph and a very beautiful young lady named Mary. Now, Mary, of course, has never been married married before, right? Other than her name being Mary. She was not married at this time. One day, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to speak to Mary. So she went to, uh, she, so she's in her room. All of a sudden, poof, this angel shows up. And he's like, yo, what's up, Mary? It's me, Angel Gabriel. I'm here to bring you some good news. She's like, oh my God, what good news you got? And he's like, yo, you got favor with God. She's like, that's amazing. Also, you're gonna give birth to a son. Yo, bro, I ain't married. Yeah, but you're gonna give a miracle birth to a son who's also gonna be a miracle. He's gonna be the savior of the world and you're gonna name him Jesus. And she's like, great. This is gonna be really hard to explain to my fiance who I'm not married to yet. And he's like, he's like, no, it's cool, but girl, you're pregnant. And she's like, 
okay, that's a lot to take in. And she's, he's like, don't worry, I'm gonna visit him too. Boom. Next thing you know, Joseph, asleep. He heard after Mary, of course, went to him, and she's like, hey, so, um, crazy story, I'm giving birth to the Son of God. And he's like, you're what? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mary, I just don't think I can do this. I just think that, you know, that our paths are going in two different directions, and it's not me, it's you. Um, so we're gonna do this silently, but we're gonna break off this engagement. We're not gonna get married after all. You can deal with the shame yourself. So Joseph goes to sleep and whatever, he's like debating what he's gonna do, but he's like kind of made up his mind. He's not gonna marry her because like that's a big deal, right? Especially in these times. So Angel Gabriel shows up in his dream. He's like, Joseph, Joseph, it's me, the Angel Gabriel. The Angel Gabriel in the dream came to, <laughs> oh golly, came to, G, came to, G, to Joseph, came to Joe bro. And he's like, look, here's the deal. You're gonna marry Mary. You're gonna marry this girl. You're gonna make her your wife. And she is pregnant with the son of God. This is a miracle, Joseph. So buck it up, buttercup, let's go. Joseph wakes up, he heard from God. This is amazing. So what they do is they make their journey all the way back to, I believe it's Jerusalem? Yes, yeah, right, sorry, fact checks. <laughs> Making their way back to Jerusalem, because basically there was this big sense of happening and they had to go fill up some paperwork. So they're like, oh, we gotta go all the way back to Jerusalem to do this. So she's like mega pregnant at this point. And they're like, oh, let's start the journey. So they start going, they get a donkey and they're like, oh, this is such a long journey. They're going, going, going. All of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, it's getting super dark. And this is like a long journey. So they're like, we better find some place to sleep. So let's go to this innkeeper's house. So they go to the innkeeper and they're like, yo, do, do, do. The guy answers, hello. And he's like, yo, look, bro, we need some place to sleep. My prego wife, me. Uh, got a baby on the way. He's like, ah, sorry, man. We ain't got no room in the inn, but you can sleep in the barn. Okay, first off, backtrack. How embarrassing to be the innkeeper who didn't make room for Jesus. That is all I have to say about that. So they go to the barn. All of a sudden, Mary is like heavy labor pains. She's giving birth. This puppy is happening. There's a star. There's shepherds. Angels show up. Ooh. Heart the herald angels singing. There's wise men, they see a star, they go. They come to this guy named Herod, King Herod. Herod's not a good dude, but he tries to play off like he's a good dude. And he's like secretly in his mind, he's like, I'm gonna kill that baby because he was jealous of all the power that this baby king was going to have, right? From all the scriptures that have been spoken. And so he's like, yo, wise man, how about you guys go find this baby? Let me know where he's at so I can worship him too. And they knew because God knew that Herod was not gonna do that thing he said he was gonna do. He was gonna try to kill the baby. Bad, bad man. Definitely on the naughty list. Let's just say that, okay? But the wise men ended up following the star to baby Jesus. He was born beautiful. They didn't have any place to lay him, so they laid him in a manger, which I think is pretty much a feeding trough for animals. So how's that for a, a kingly sleeping place? <laughs> Fantastic. But it's a beautiful story in and of itself. So this beautiful baby, this gift to the world has been born. Behold, a savior has been born. These three wise men come to, or the, we three kings, kings of something, something. It's a Christmas carol, I don't know the words, but I'm sure it's great. So they go to Jesus and they present him with all of these, these gifts. They bring him gold, which represents the deity, the, the godliness, the royalty of this baby. They bring him frankincense, which is which represents this holiness and this being set apart unto God, and myrrh, which of course is, oh, oh, this is beautiful. So myrrh is like a, a, a sense, a, a smell, a thing that they, they put on, an embalming agent is what they call it. It's something they do to dead bodies before they're buried. And this represents the whole purpose for G Jesus being born, being born, working miracles, but then dying on a cross for our sins and then raising again to give us new life. How spectacular is that? And that, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, is the ultimate goodness of God being born and gifted to the world. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the true meaning of Christmas. Like, talk about gifts. I mean, we all wanna be in the nice list. We, like, you don't want to be in the naughty list, let's be honest. Even, even if you're like, yeah, but I'm really good at being bad, you do not want to be on the naughty list because then, you know, presents, right? 
But let us remember in this Christmas season, as we venture into wherever we're going for Christmas and come, across, come upon a night at Christmas, shameless plug, tell your parents about it, get there. As we come around this time of Christmas, remember that gifts are great, Santa's wonderful, we love him. Give that fat man some cookies and milk, like set him up, some carrots for the reindeer, who knows? I don't know what you guys do, that's what I used to do. But it's cool, still do sometimes. <clears throat> for the budget will allow. <laughs> Kidding, kind of. But no matter what, remember, during this Christmas season, let's remember the, the original, the OG gift to humanity was Jesus. So, the best way we can honor Jesus in this time is simply being a gift of goodness to other people. Take the story of the Good Samaritan, live a life that gives to people, even when it, even when it doesn't feel the most comfortable. Being good to people will make friends out of enemies. It'll make better friends out of besties for the resties. So do it to it. We love you guys. Merry Christmas. Catch you next time. All right, Christian, thank you so much for that. Okay, guys, I promised you Santa Claus, didn't I? And I always deliver, so let's bring him on out. Hey, Santa, come join us. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. It's me, Santa Claus. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, ho, ho, are you sure it? Are yep. you sure it's you? It's definitely me, Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. Look at my glasses and hat, obviously. Ho, ho. Okay, well, it's just that your beard is very Oh, Perfect. yes, thank you. Oh, 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 I've got creams and oils to put in it. Oils? Oh, 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 oh okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, and, um, what, oh, what is that? This is all my Thanksgiving food that I took so much intaking for my belly, and now I'm f fatter than ever. <laughs> Wait, that's a ball! It's not, no, it's not. It's, it's <gasps> not a ball. Not Christian! Ah, uh, look. Christian, what are you doing in Santa's outfit? Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I know I was supposed to get Santa to come, but I kind of forgot to get him in time and so we couldn't make it. So I figured no one would notice if I just... Did you guys notice? You guys knew, huh? Yeah, I kind they, of dropped They're the ball. smarter than that. Okay, well, that one. here's the deal. Santa's gonna be at church on Christmas Eve Eve. <laughs> Wednesday. Christmas Eve Eve. Don't eat his beard. Sorry. So come see Santa then. And I know if you guys are good, like we've been talking about, you guys are going to have lots of presents under the tree. We love you all so much. Have a wonderful Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. And to all a good night. Bye, guys. Love you. Bye. <laughs>